Hello and welcome to your Insta Live with Jen Gregson and I chatting all things rehab, running and cross training. And if anyone knows what that is about, it is Genevieve Gregson. She is the master. <laughs> Hi. Hello, hello. <clears throat> happy Tuesday. Yeah, happy Tuesday. How was your session just before? Um, yes, yeah, it was good actually. Got a little bit sweaty and spicy. It's actually a really cold day here in Melbourne. So um, it was nice to get warmed up. And actually I did think of you because um, we did a similar flow to our session yesterday and my glutes were like, oof. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was like... So much pain yesterday. I just remember thinking back, I barely spoke to you. <laughs> it, was <just> like... <laughs> it was game face. But I yeah. feel like that's the good thing about a good training session is, you know, when, you, when you're when you in the moment, it's like, no, no, it's all business. And then at the yeah. end, it's like, oh, that was good. Yeah, I know. But I just like thought about it after the fact and I was like, oh my gosh, I was so like miserable throughout that <laughs> I like, <laughs> you not at all. Up and I just was giving you nothing. <laughs> no, 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 that's true. I was like, nearly there. And you're like, Alice, this counting situation is terrible. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining. I've had some cracker questions coming through, um, all to do with your incredible journey thus far. Um, and it has been so amazing to, first of all, be a part of, but just to watch. Um, I think everyone is so, all of Australia, so proud and internationally of how far you've come. And, and we did sort of have a chat online the other day just in terms of the way you cross-train, the way you approach it from a mental perspective, from a nutrition perspective, and just uh, I think I was just in awe of, of some of the pearls of wisdom that you came out with, just the Jedi master, I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> so I thought we'd tap into that one a little bit. And we do have 10 good questions, so we'll keep it short, sharp, and snappy to the point. Mm -hmm. um, but a nice, simple one to start off with, Jen. Um, at the moment, you've obviously come through a significant sort of, how many months are we now? Four months in total, slightly more? Just over. I think I'm at like 17 weeks post-surgery. Post-surgery. Okay. So, and, and you've gone from literally not being able to do anything, lying on a bed, just doing some mm -hmm. toe exercises, to going for your first jog, right? Yeah. So... It's incredible. Um, and just talk us through a, d a typical day at the moment for training. What would you say? Yeah, honestly, like, I mean, I'm sure if any athletes are following along, um, everyone knows that when you're injured, you actually have less time in the day than when you're healthy um, because there's so many boxes to tick um, while coming back and especially from such a serious injury like rupturing your Achilles. I've had to you know, start from square one again just because I was so inactive for so long that I lost, like, every little bit of muscle that you would have from, like, your toes up until your hips pretty much. Um, so an average day for me is pretty much um, my Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are all the same. So it consists of going to the QAS, which is the um, state institute uh, where I do, like, all my gym work and pool work and everything, and it's just, like, an awesome facility where it's, like, biggest gym that I've ever been to in my life um, and I am pretty much just following the schedule of my gym coach David Watts he used to work in the AFL and QAS recruited him to help in situations like this he's awesome at rehab so I'm pretty much with him from eight o'clock on Monday Wednesday Friday and we do just do a really intense gym session my Monday Friday sessions are really big and that's just general lifting it's like strengthening all the major muscles um, I'm doing way more lifting and gym work than I've ever done in my whole career. So I'm probably stronger than I've ever been right now. Um, but I wouldn't say those muscles are as useful when it comes to running. It's more just making sure that, um, you know, I'm strong during this fragile state. Uh, and then after we do about an hour of gym, and that includes everything from the major muscles right down to like foot intrinsics and balancing and calf work, um, at the moment, we go straight into some drills where I prepare for my running session. My running session is pretty pathetic right now. It's a few strides on grass, um, but it's all really exciting for me. Like, you know, we go out to the track, we, you know, treat it like a proper session and, um, yeah, I do a few strides. Then I come back in and I get back on the Alter-G uh, treadmill. So that's an anti-gravity treadmill where 
I set it back to pretty light, about 70% of my body weight, and then just do some repetitions of like two minutes. I'll, I'll eventually build up to 1K reps um, just to get my heart rate back up and get used to your cadence again because it's been so long since I like moved my legs at a reasonable clip. Um, and then from there, I usually go home to eat and meet you, Alice, for some Pilates on Monday, Wednesdays, our usual routine. We get there about midday. Um, and then I just schedule an hour bike ride in the afternoon. And even though it sounds taxing and like mentally extremely boring, um, the bike I don't mind as much because it's not me getting on a bike and trying to, you know, cross train as hard as I can and get a good sweat on. It's more just getting in that aerobic zone. I wear a heart rate monitor. I get it to about 140 beats per minute and I read a book. I sit upright and read a book every single bike session. So that's like my me time. Um, so that's my Monday, Wednesday, Fridays and Tuesdays are exactly the same, except I start earlier at 7.30 and get a pool running session in, um, on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. And that's followed immediately by a physio briefing, um, or a massage. And then from there we go into a really light gym session and then I do a 40 minute walk, which again is me time. I listen to a podcast. I, you know, just wear a sports bra, get some sun and go for a 40 minute walk and yeah, just try practice really using that foot as naturally as possible. Um, and that gets my whole week filled up, believe it or not, uh, with exercise and rehab and come the weekend, my coach is just like, do a bike session at some point in a few calf raises, but that'll do it for the weekend. Nothing, nothing more than that. That's my, you know, relaxing time to be with friends and family and, and not be focusing on spending hours in the gym. That is fantastic. I'm, I'm just so in awe of that dedication. And following on from that, when you first wake up in the morning, and I know as a runner and someone that not only is a successful runner, but you're actually, um, you're like a soul runner. Like you just love it, right? Mm -hmm. And to obviously not be able to do it as much as you would at the moment, you're doing a little bit, which is great, but to sort of lie in bed before you get out of bed and what sort of what is your sort of mental game that you play? You know, you've got a full day of cross training ahead. It is mm -hmm. a slog. It is a grind. It's not glamorous. You've said that. You've recently just had a, a haircut just to sort of make it easy for yourself. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. uh, uh, like, um, what, how do you approach each day just from a mental state? Like, what, what's your driving factor? Yeah, look, like I, I probably explain my days at the moment, not really kind of, um you know, honing in on how boring it can get. Like I am due for a scenery change and I am going to Sydney soon to see um, our other side of the family with Ryan. But it it's one of those things where I know I'm lucky to have this job in the first place. So like I said to Ryan the other day when I woke up and I was heading to the uh, QAS for a swimming session and I was like, oh, I'm dreading this. I hate this. I hate swimming. I hate pool running. Um, and I'm like, is this what it feels like for a person that has a nine to five job heading to work? Like, is this how they feel like kind of depressed and down and not excited? And Ryan's like, no, not really, because you're about to go to work and put yourself through like physical pain to exert yourself in the pool. And he goes, most people can rock up to their job and sit at a desk for a few hours and not have to do anything. And I was like, yeah, I guess. But I use the mentality that I am so grateful to be a professional athlete and I know that it's a small percentage of people that get that opportunity and I never want to take that for granted because one day, you know, I won't have that opportunity anymore. And with this phase of my life, it is unfortunate and I still obviously think about, you know, the day that I ruptured my Achilles and it's really devastating that it ended that way and, and all the things I would have done differently to not end up there. But at the same time, I know that I'm wired away to handle this sort of part of my career. And I don't sit and think, poor me. I, I think, you know, these things um, are meant to happen to people like me because I can find a way to get through it. And I enjoy the, the challenge of, of people thinking that it's going to be really hard to come back from a double Achilles surgery. I know people are doubting me and I know it, it's going to be hard, like, I do, I'm well aware that there is a chance that I may never return to the sport at the level that I left it, but I get so excited at the chance to prove that I'm going to have a good crack at it. So waking up on those mornings where it's just cross training and hell in front of me, I just think it's so temporary. Um, you know, I can get through this. If I look to my goals for next year, I mean, I prepare to be on the roads doing the road season and that's not that far away. So I can definitely think of the quote that, pain is temporary and glory is forever like it's it's cliche but it's true 
all the work that you put in now, you'll reap those benefits. And I've done it so many times in my career. The amount of times I've stood on a start line and thought to myself, God, you're good. Like, I'm so proud of you. Look what you've done. You're here. And this is just going to be another one of those situations where I'll go do my first race and I'll probably not even worry about the result. I'll just be so proud that, you know, I, I got through that, that massive adversity that people probably thought I couldn't do. Yeah, that is incredible. I've, I've genuinely got goosebumps thinking about that, Jen. <laughs> and obviously I only see um, a very small portion of your training, but even the way you approach Pilates, it is just like blood, sweat and tears go into it, but also no fuss. I think you're the only person that I've ever done Pilates with that literally does Pilates on concrete. And, <laughs> and, and to be honest, you don't think it's a big deal, but it speaks volumes about you as a person. So a towel on concrete, there is nothing flashy about, you know, um, the way that you train in terms of you turn up with good form, but there's no frills, no frills whatsoever. And I really appreciate, like, the, um, that incredible grind. And I think that's, that's a real testament to you. And, and we did have a chat the other day about, I guess it is a bit of a slog, and, and there was a component of how do you approach your nutrition during this cross-training phase? Because I think... It is such a grind. And then I know from a physio perspective, when my patients get injured, they say to me, Alice, I can't run. I'm going to get fat. I'm going to get lazy. I'm going to just, you know, go into this dramatic state of, you know, uh, despair. How, how do you approach that side of things? Yeah, I think on my career when I used to get hurt, because I, I mean, I've been getting hurt since I was about 22, but um, they were all my thoughts originally like it was all about how do I make sure I don't put on any weight um and you know get healthy as quick as possible and get back to my fit self and I think for a few times I did make a lot of mistakes where I thought that you know my body composition is more important than doing all the hard work and getting my body in the right place first before worrying about you know how fat I was or how fit I looked and I mean after stuffing that up a few times it was clear to me that um, you know, that's, that's not the way I can approach an injury. And especially over my career, I have had some pretty serious injuries. And I've also had situations where I'm against the clock and needed to get fit really fast. So I just decided that um, I would only focus on nutrition for the sense that I was getting enough fuel. I didn't ever restrict myself. I just started to realize that it's already hard enough, one, facing an injury and accepting it, and then two, thinking okay, here's my plan of attack to moving forward. And it's, you know, hours of cross training and then more rehab than I could ever imagine. And the hours in the gym are going to triple. Um, I couldn't add on top of that and being miserable because I can't eat what I used to eat. It was too hard to approach all those things at once. So I started to realize I'll worry about my body composition when it's time to worry about my body composition. And for me, that is honestly maybe two months out from a major championship is when I start to think, okay, you know, am I the right leanness that I need to be for this, this race coming up? Um, but people I constantly asked about, you know, my diet and like, what do I restrict? What are the things that I have to have and the things that I absolutely can't? And a lot of girls will say this at the top level. It's not about that. It's not about um, worrying what you can and can't have. As long as you're eating healthy and you're getting in all the fuel, like the protein, the carbs, the healthy fats, the other stuff on top is fine. Like I don't think people should be punished when they're injured and cut out all the good things that they enjoy. And it just became a rule of mine that I used to even say to Ryan, I'm like, don't comment on my weight when I'm hurt. It's going to be a thing. I'm going to blow a little bit. Like I'll put on weight, but I'm working that hard that I can't focus on that aspect. And and he knows now and he, if anyone ever comments on my weight, he thinks, you know, like give her benefit of the doubt that she knows what she's doing because she always times it. And it's been something that I've tried to give advice to girls in our group over the past like year or so because we've had a lot of younger girls on tour with us. And the best bit of advice I can give is don't worry about your weight, um, especially when your body is already going through so much like injury. Anytime someone asks me for advice, I'm obviously not allowed to give um, advice that I've, you know, got a degree on. But I just say, look, in my situation, anytime I get injured, the last thing I consider is weight gain because your body needs to heal and the early time of your um, injury is the most important time. So if you start restricting food and calories and, and 
neglecting your body from just energy, it's not going to heal the rate you need it to. And something I did with this Achilles is I completely grieved it. I did nothing for like pretty much six weeks except go on holidays, eat a lot of food, drink some alcohol and just um, enjoy family time because the happier you are, the faster you'll heal. And now I know it's crunch time. It's time to really put in the hours and work hard. Like that's what I'm doing. And my body will return to normal when it's ready to return to normal. But it is definitely something I will never track. And I don't think it's important to track. Oh, my gosh. There are so many pearls from that. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that everyone that's listening and those that listen afterwards take some absolute take home. And there, there has to be something in that in terms of you do heal better, A, when you're happier, A, when you're, um, B, when you're fueled. And, mm -hmm. um, and to sort of see it from one of the best track and field athletes in Australia. Like, I mean, that's hopefully that hits home for a lot of people out there struggling with, you know, grieving through injury and also going through the cross training process, which is a slog. Mm -hmm. um, and then just veering off, we did discuss the other day, in terms of confidence in coming back from a, such a major trauma, I know even Ryan said that he's still getting his confidence back having watched, you know, yeah. that, that trauma. Is there um, any mental tips or confidence tips that you've got there when you're coming back? Obviously, you had your first few steps just last week and then this week again. Anything you've got there for us? Yeah. I mean, it, it's exactly that and... and it would be silly for me to say I don't have doubts and fears still. Of course I do. I mean, that would be the main worry is that I do all of this to come back and I just never quite get there. But, I mean, number one, it's no use harping on and worrying about something that hasn't even happened yet. I'm going to give myself every chance. But I think the most important thing in a situation especially like mine is just look for positive stories. Like, don't – it's kind of like you hear that someone ruptures your Achilles and then you go out and search for all the terrible – um, things that have come out from people rupturing Achilles, like could never return to the sport. It was never as good again. Um, like this person had Achilles surgery and never PB'd ever again. Like I don't, I completely ignore those stories. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me on Instagram that give me the really positive stories. But then I also have a percentage of people giving me this negative side of their experience where it's like, oh, I was never the same after I ruptured mine. So for me, I completely like filter out anything that is of no benefit. And Ryan and I both, if we see something floating around on the internet, we'll grab it and read it. And if it's positive, I keep it. I mean, you, Alice, early on when I first ruptured my Achilles, like you sent me a story and you were like, this guy fully ruptured his Achilles like a few months out from the Olympics. Look what he did. Like there's so many stories out there that make you believe it's doable. It's just you don't always hear them all. So I would say with injury – look for success stories and hold on to them. Not that you have to live someone else's story, but it's just showing you it can be done. And everyone is individual. So just because someone else couldn't get through it doesn't mean you can't. And I mean, I could be biased and obviously a bit delusional at times, but I always think if there is a small margin of chance, that's going to be me. Like I'm going to be the one that gets there. So when it like approaches scary milestones, like I remember they said, oh, we, you can't go running until you can do 15 calf raises. Um, continuously and I remember thinking at one point there's absolutely no way I'll ever be able to do 15 like I can barely do one but as like the weeks drew in and the days got closer and I was super nervous I just remember thinking like it's not the end of the world if I can't do 15 today I'll get there eventually I'm not going to not be able to do 15 calf raises for the rest of my life so you also can't set limits that are set in stone like you have to be flexible with your comeback and that's something I've always been completely open to it's like this is our rough schedule and it's awesome if I can stick to it but it's not the end of the world if I can't. And there'll be some days where Dave and I look at each other and it's like, oh, that was a bit sore. I don't think I really like that. Let's pull it back a little bit. Let's let's skip that. Um, but I have been super lucky because last Friday was, yeah, my first run day. We got all the family out. It was a super emotional day. But, I mean, it went as good as it could have gone. I trotted up the grass, um, obviously looked a bit uneven and not very symmetrical, but it was a it was a success like I woke up the next morning no pain um there was no soreness in any part of my body and it was like okay let's crack on next step and those little wins give me um you know a lot of confidence like I remember Dave texted me that night and he's like look it's no 42k but it's a step forward and I said no but it makes me feel like 42k is now achievable and it's just about holding on to those little things that make you feel like yeah okay that was a step forward I think I can keep going and I don't look too far because I have goals, but I don't want to look too far in our rehab because it can get overwhelming. 
Um, I just think if I'm jogging, you know, very averagely on grass right now, in about a month from now, I feel like that could be a continuous five minute jog looking pretty normal. So good. And to be fair, I looked at that footage and it was not terrible jogging. I know you feel like <laughs> you said it was like a, um, a, like a baby giraffe or something, but no. to be honest, you've, you've still got it. You've still got it. That arm swing, that chest posture, I thought it was great, to be honest. So don't be too hard on yourself. Um, and I guess, um, and kind of lending on from the confidence, if you had the chance to go back to, say, 19-year-old Jen, mm -hmm. what would you say in terms of approaching, not, not specifically races or anything, you know, but in approaching your training and, I guess, as part of training, your cross-training, would, would you give yourself some advice back to that sort of 19, 20-year-old Jen, what would you say? Yeah, I mean, the 19, 20-year-old Jen was so naive but also super carefree. Like, I'd never had an injury. I was in the college system, so I was, you know, very supported and very looked after. But I definitely had no idea of the professional world um, that I was like, to enter into. And I think I'm really lucky because I met Ryan at a young age where – he was so beyond his years. Like, he was the ultimate professional. Um, you know, I met – I mean, I've always known Ryan since he was about 16, but he was thrown into the professional world at about 18, 19. So by 22, when we were spending a lot of time together, I was just this little girl in this professional setup, and he was just like, what are you doing? You know, you're responsible for yourself. Like, I thought, you know, if our coach didn't make us meet for a, an hour run, then, like, he didn't maybe have to do it. And he's just like, no completely like accountable for everything you do like you're you need to get massage you need to see physios you need to like eat right you need to get enough sleep and I just think I was lucky I got caught early but if I could go back to the 19 year old self I'd say look after your body better like I was reckless I would go out in college and not sleep all night and then wake up at six in the morning and do you know five by 2k reps really intensely and I just treated my body like it was always going to be unbreakable but I mean, I was lucky at the time I did have an unbreakable body, but every good thing comes to an end. And um, when I hit that cycle of injuries, it did, it caught me off guard. And it did take me a few years to work out how to be more disciplined and more professional and cross train better. Like my cross training at 22 would have been pathetic. Like it would have been more about getting the hours in of zero quality and just being like, yeah, I did it. So I feel like I did waste a few years early on in my 20s where I could have been much more professional. And, um, you know, I feel like then would have been nice to have an older me saying, you know, do this right, be professional. You know, there'll come a time where your body's not this durable and can't bounce back after no sleep. And, um, yeah, but I guess it's all a learning curve. Like I, I tell all the young ones now, like Rose Davies, I'm like, you have no idea how good your body is right now. <laughs> so I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and that is something really lovely about you. You're such an open book and such a nurturing, honest personality that you're happy to just like delve off pearls of wisdom. Um, to, and, and people really listen. I mean, not only because of all of your accolades, but just because you're like a lovely human, you're happy to sort of divulge some of that. Um, and there's been a few, not only just normal everyday people, but elite athletes that are like, Jen must write a book because if I could get her wisdom on cross training like you are known to be the guru of perhaps not being such a huge um high mileage runner but a gritty hard working and you've got that cross training to an absolute t and your fitness you can just peak it when you need it it, it is an incredible skill uh, do, do you have any tips on how you do that balance that slightly lower running mileage Mm -hmm. pretty big cross training mileage to get a great outcome is there is there a balance that you find yeah there definitely is and that only came because I really didn't have a choice at, at in like pretty much 2019 my Achilles was really giving me a lot of grief and doctors were saying you know maybe you should consider retiring it just didn't give me any option like all of me wanted to run 150k a week and be a high mileage runner and run the same um sort of k's a week that all my opposition was but like I just couldn't as much as I tried I would break so I had to kind of stop being stubborn and trying something that didn't work over and over again and accept that my way is going to be really different and it's nowhere near as much fun as running a lot but you know it allowed me to continue doing what I loved and that was being on the circuit racing going to world champs or making the Olympics and so Ryan and I really sat down and kind of said 
you can't do double runs, for example. You know, I had to accept that my Achilles wasn't recovering from a morning run to an afternoon run. So we just kind of said, it's not up for debate. If you run in the morning, there is no running again for another 24 hours. And that was fine because we worked out a way to just bulk up my mornings a little bit more. You know, I made my thresholds go from 8K a session to 11K, but that was fine because I had 24 hours recovery to my next run. And like my coach was completely on board that if we, we piled up the mornings and, you know, got myself to 120K, we could really throw some cross training on in the afternoon. So there was a period there at the start of 2020 where I was doing all my runs at Albert Park and finishing at MSAC and just pretty much like walking to the pool, ripping my clothes off and jumping straight in and doing a pool run so that I was trying to restrict that gap between when I finished my run to when I hopped in the pool just so it kind of continued the whole aerobic work for like two hours then so I was getting hour run straight into a pool hour pool run and by the time I finished I've had two hours of my heart rate being over like 140 beats per minute and I just got ultra fit and it was a like a cheat code for me because right up until Worlds 2019 I mean I was juggling my Achilles at like it's work coming back from its worst and there was a period where I was probably only running about 60 70k a week but yeah like I said I was jumping in a pool straight away doing hard sessions in the pool, like doing a bike as well, sometimes getting on an ultra G and just finding ways to fill in all the gaps to make it all equal about 150K. So, I mean, it's hard because you've got to have that time and, and I'm lucky that my job allows me to have the time to do that. But it is something I'm going to take into my marathon life. Like, I, I will never be able to do what Sinead does. Like, she is an absolute machine. Like, even Eloise, seeing what these girls can do, um, on a regular basis in training is truly something like close to a miracle for me because I just think my body wouldn't allow that. But, I mean, I've, again, gone and looked for examples of people that have run lower mileage but topped up aerobically with cross-training and still run good marathons. And, I mean, the evidence is everywhere. It's doable. And if there's anyone that can top up endurance with cross-training, I think it's me. So, yeah, that's where I hold my hopes. Oh, mate, I don't doubt that for a second. And, um, yeah, the dedication to that is, and as you say, it's the harder option, but in the mm -hmm. long run, I mean, you've got three Olympics under your belt. So, yeah. you know, like there is absolutely no question that it does, it gets results. And yeah. ultimately, the, the professional that you are, it's the results that matter. So, and it, it probably in, in some ways makes you an even grittier athlete because you've got a slog. It's not a walk yeah. in the park. No, that's and I I believe in that. I I pull it on the card when I'm in like the middle of the race. I did it in Doha, and I'm you know feeling like crap, and I still have a K to go. I just think to myself, I've done so much training, and I just know mentally I have it over anyone that's suffering as much as me right now. <laughs> but I just think I'll grip my way to the end because I've been through hell and back to get here. Oh, one hundred percent. There, yeah, and, and you see that in your races as well. You, you got that. Um, if there's a little bit left in the tank, which there not usually is in the end, you'll just yeah. drive it on empty and just make it work. And it's it's very inspiring to watch. Um, and and in terms of your cross training, so you've you've got an incredible array. Let's like um, you've got initially it was your swimming, you've got your water running, you've got your bike work, you've got your strength and conditioning, you've got your alter G, you're now running on the grass, you're doing mm -hmm. strides. Um, and you have this year added Pilates, which I'm bloody honoured to have you in. <laughs> and just, just out of interest too, just for those, how do you find, I guess, because there is like a million things that you're doing and you're still finding time to get the Pilates in, which is incredible. How do you feel that that works for your body? Yeah, Pilates is something, I mean, I've actually just coincidentally had it in my routine for as long as I've had like really bad injuries. So in 2014, I started getting a lot of pelvis issues and it was just essentially came down to, and it happens in a lot of females, my glutes were just switching off um, over and over again when I would go out for a run and I was overusing my adductors and um, it went into like stress reactions on my pelvis and then I tore a labrum and it was like one of those injuries where you feel like you're banging your head against the wall because there's no real problem you're just kind of achy and sore all the time until you get to a point where you're not getting any power when you run and um, you know I went and got scans and saw professionals and it was a really hard one to fix because it, it kept saying it was osteitis pubis but it wasn't it was just 
you know, my body had got into a routine of not engaging all the muscles it needed to run. Um, and so what ended up coming from that is I went and saw like a, a pelvis specialist, like she specialized in like, um, hip injuries and she was like, it's simple. You just, you need glute activities before you run. And so I would have just started off going through a routine that she gave me of, of turning your glute before you run to, um, learn how to make them work naturally again. And then Ryan and I just started creating a list in our phone of just exercises we picked up along the way in our career and formed like this massive long list that I've made the girls do with me all this year um, when we're in St. Moritz. But it's essentially Pilates just with no structure. Like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just throwing exercises left, right and centre. Um, so when I started doing your routine, like I can immediately know how beneficial it is because it, it incorporates pretty much everything that I've been trying to work on. It's just that you show different levels of advancement where you can go when you get really good at the low levels. Whereas I was kind of just hanging on to exercises I'd had for about five years and doing them over and over again. Um, and in a situation coming back from injury, I think it is so important because my whole body, like I said, went soft, like everything switched off. Um, you know, glute strength, used to be my specialty because I've activated them for so long but after eight weeks of nothing um, if I were to go back and start trying to rehab an Achilles and go to run like yeah my Achilles might be healed but the rest of the chain would all be broken and I think the most important thing by incorporating your Pilates sessions is when I go to run other than the fact that I feel like a baby elephant and I need to lose about 20 kilos when I run the rest of my body feels so strong and engaged and like that it can handle every single kink and link in my body. Um, and I have never had that before returning from an injury. Normally when you turn from an injury, you can pick out about five other things that start to ache. With this, like, I've never felt better when I run on that grass. And I just know that that's from doing all the Pilates and the little movements that taught the tiny intrinsic muscles all around your pelvis and in your um, abs and all the way down to my ankles. Um, they're all engaged now because we've been working on them for so many months to make sure that I was ready when running came into play. Yeah, you've been so consistent with it and your form, especially if we look at some of the stuff from the start to now, like th your middle back posture, your lower core and even your lower back, everything is just moving so beautifully. So I'm so stoked with that progress. And, yeah, I, and I'm, I'm so honoured that you're continuing to do it. And do you think that'll be something you'll do ongoing, I think, moving into the slightly longer distances in the road? You mentioned that you're thinking about pulling back on some aspects and adding a little bit more body weight moving forward. Yeah. I think when it comes to, like, real gruelling marathon training, because I've seen the girls do it, you do, like, you have to start picking what you want to keep and what is no longer... Um, necessary really you know uh, during a track season I do Monday night strides and we spike up I'll do plyometrics you know we'll do hill sprints on a Saturday uh, you know and we do really heavy lifting so that I get that explosive power but as I move up into distance and road running um, I am going to have to hand select what is really important and for me that'll be obviously getting in the case um, and seeing how much my body can handle keeping the cost training obviously to top up aerobically and I probably will go to the weight room less because you know I'm not going to be doing hang cleans and heavy squats I think that injury prevention relies on things like Pilates because it's just allowing your body to handle that continuous repetition of running on the road over and over again like I need all my muscles and joints to be strong enough to handle that so I don't break down and Pilates will probably come into a, like, a little bit more into my routine. Um, it might be more like three or four times a week just so that I'm holding strong for all the big days that, I have, that I'll have scheduled throughout the week and, um, you know, two-hour long runs, all that type of stuff. I think it's super important to just have that injury prevention in your program so that you catch things before it's too late. So oh, good, Jen. And I bet you can't wait for those really ultra long sessions. You're one of the people that would just thrive on the long grind. I can just imagine with a two hour long run, you'd probably be excited the night before for yeah. it. It's funny you say that Eloise, I was talking to Eloise on the phone the other day after like, she obviously has had an awesome debut and she's going to do Melbourne marathon too, but she's like, Oh my God, Jenny, you'll love marathon training so much. I just like, I think of you when I do it and I just know that it's so you and like, it is like, I love long reps always have and long runs are like, something I live for like you know I love getting up the front and running with the boys and just churning out for an hour 45 so um 
it's going to be fun. It'll be like obviously a massive challenge to see if I can handle the whole week together. But um, yeah, it makes me excited. I'm so excited to try it all out. Oh, we're all, um, and we're all rooting for you so much. We're all on the sidelines, literally cheering for any decision you make moving forward with your career. Like we're all there um, batting for you 100%. And, um, and I, I genuinely feel from what I've seen just in terms of the way your body moves and just in terms of your personality as well, like, yeah, Marathon's going to have to watch out, I reckon, for sure. Thanks. And, <laughs> and I'm very conscious of not taking up too much of your time. I've just got one last fun little pop quiz, quick fire round, all right? <laughs> so I've got a whole lot of uh, legends that have asked me just some really fun random questions that will just be nice and easy for you to answer. So, first of all, pop quiz, question number one. So, spikes with socks or no socks? No socks, 100%. <laughs> also, I was thinking the water jump and steeple. You're not going to want socks. There's no, but, like, no... I've done with no socks. Like, yeah. Okay, no socks. Uh, Post-race, champagne or a cocktail? Oh, that's a good one. I probably always turn to cocktails just because I love cocktails, but I would never turn to champagne. <laughs> Just sounds like it's going to be a sesh. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. love okay, now I probably know the answer to this one. You're going to run, for a session, you're going to run around the Tan or Albert Park Lake as your choice? Mm, the Tan, every yeah. time. Yeah. There it is. I just reckon it is, I find that Albert Park's a bit slippery. The yeah. Tan is a little less slippery. And that's like, my Achilles hates the slippiness. It's true. And a bit windy as well, Albert Park. Yeah, Always. yeah. Yeah. I'll take um, and you're a bit of a race goer. Cox Plate or Melbourne Cup? You're going to place a bet. Which one? Oh, Cox Plate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> so assertive. And, yeah. and for your preference, you're going to go and watch a movie or you're going to watch a TV series? Oh, uh, that's a mood thing. It changes from time to time. But I'd have to say if we're going off ratio, I've locked into a lot of TV series in my time. Probably yeah. more. Yeah. And, but you do love a movie, that's for sure. Um, yeah, <laughs> at coffee, pre-run, post-run? Uh, I have to have a pre-run, but I also will never shy away from a post-run cafe visit. Double up. I'm into that. But always in the morning, coffee first. First, yeah, every time. AFL team? Um, by default, Sydney Swans. Because... So Ryan in there. That's uh, also on that bandwagon. That's very diplomatic of you. Um, <laughs> in terms of training, you're going to braid your hair, you're going to whack it in a bun. What's your mood? Everyone knows that. It's a braid. <laughs> there you go. Bun means training, braid means racing. Yeah, okay, fair, fair, fair. Um, your favourite post-race meal? Burgers. Every time. Burgers. Every time. Awesome. I swear to burgers. So good. Um, and in terms of cross-training, would you prefer to bike or pool run? Pool run, yeah, I love pool run. I feel like you should, there should be an Olympic sport just for that sport, seriously. Yeah. I don't know why I like pool running because on a bike I'll listen to music or read a book. In the pool yeah. I never do anything. I don't listen to music. I don't talk to anybody. I don't listen to anything. I just pool run. I think I'm in my own thoughts. It's me. Yeah, that's wild, mate. It's like, that's, that's incredible. Um, <laughs> in terms of, okay, favourite thing to watch at the Olympics, obviously except for track. Oh, can't be track. Um, ooh. Would it be probably swimming because we do so well. Like, I know we're going to get a medal every time I watch. <laughs> just so competitive. I, I, love it. I just look for Australians in any sport and I just like bank on hoping. That they yeah, win. that's actually true, especially this um, in Tokyo. Swimming was yeah. exceptional. Insane. Um, Two more quick ones. Favourite international stadium that you've run at? Um, I'd have to say Paris Diamond League. It was in the old um, Rugby World Cup stadium. They don't do it there anymore, but it's where I got my Australian record. That's uh, right. Insane. Like, it was so, like, covered and enclosed that it felt like it was warm in there. Um, but if I'm talking about current stadiums, because they don't use that one anymore, I would say London Diamond League. It was the old Olympic stadium. It's just hands down fastest coolest tracks ever yeah because you did the paris diamond league almost straight after rio and just like yeah. lit it up i, I literally 
that race and I was like, I'm so over it. I've already achieved everything I want to achieve. I'll just do this last race. And then I got the Australian record. <laughs> That's so good. I specifically remember that. That was wild. <laughs> and then final pop quiz question for you. If you could go for a long run with anyone, not even a runner, pretend like they can run at your pace and they're not going to hold you up or anything, anyone that you would like to just chat to, have like a nice conversation with, who would that person be? Um, it would be an actor yeah. that I just want to like know more about. I reckon at the moment, and it could just be because I've been watching a lot of films that she in, is Margot Robbie. Oh, good choice. I her upbringing but it would be so interesting and like how she ended up where she was but yeah i was we're just watching a movie with her in it so that's probably just bias because she's fresh. that is brilliant actually i can see a lot of similarities there and in terms of some of like alexi pappas do we have a little movie coming your way jen at some time <laughs> yeah please. i wouldn't i would be so bad at acting oh my god <laughs> that right away but you're very good at being yourself your genuine self and if they wanted you to act as yourself in a movie you'd nail it that's true yeah, so give yourself some credit. Um, well, that, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm going to leave you to it. Go and have some dinner. Just go and chill out. Put those feet up after a big day of cross training. And I do look forward to seeing you tomorrow for some Pilates. As yep. so you are we 11? We are, are 11, 11 your 11. time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 11 your time, 12 my time. And if anyone actually does want to jump in, I actually have a free trial and Jen's going to be doing that class tomorrow, which is 12 p.m. Melbourne time, 11 a.m. Queensland time. If you want to jump in and do 30 minutes of call with us, uh, train like Jen, feel free to jump on in. Sounds good. I won't speak, though, because I'll be in pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, I'm not going to be friendly, but you're going to train with me, and that's yeah, fine. Yeah. Always. Yeah. <laughs> love that. Awesome. All right. Well, enjoy your night, mate. Thanks so much, Alex. Always lovely to speak with you. You too. See you, dude. Bye. Yeah. Thank you.